We present Kim Peacock as Paul Temple and Marjorie Westbury as Steve in the Francis Durbridge serial, Paul Temple and the Van Dyke Affair. Episode 7, Steve Entertains. Here's the car. I'll drive, Paul. Yes, all right. Oh, I haven't got the key. It's all right. I've got it. Is that your parcel on the back seat? Oh. What is it, Steve? What is it? Paul, it's that doll. The doll that was in the attache case. The doll? You sure? Yes. Uh, oh, Paul. What's the matter? It's covered in blood. Blood? Yes, look. Why, Timothy, you're right, Steve. Just look at the seat. It looks as if there's been a fight or something. Certainly does. Didn't you lock the car? No, I didn't. What do you think has happened? I don't know. Unless Mrs. Desmond decided to wait. Let me have a look at that doll. Paul, that's an ambulance. Oh, which way did it go? Round to the right. That's the back of the Commodore Club. Stay here. Where are you going? I'm going back to the Commodore, please. Paul. Here's my call. Temple, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Temple. I'll have a call. What's happened? Oh, brother, am I glad I caught you. One of the band boys went out for a breath of air. He found Mrs. Dem Desmond up, up the mews in back of the club. She was beaten up. Is she badly hurt? Yes, yeah, she's in a pretty bad way. We sent for an ambulance. Oh, come along, McCall. Take the car back to the flat, Steve. I'll see you later. All right. But what shall I do with the doll? The doll? Where did you get that? It was in my car. In your car? Yes. That's very odd, isn't it? Why? Have you seen it before, Mr. McCall? Yes, of course. It belongs to Mrs. Desmond. How do you know? Well, she had it with her. Early in the evening, I mean, she, well, she told me she was taking it down to Eastbourne for a little girl, but but how on earth did it get into your car? Paul, don't you see what happened? Mary Desmond must have got tired of waiting and walked out of the club just as we drove up. And when she found the car was unlocked, she got in and waited for us. Yeah, but somebody spotted her and dragged her out. That's just about it, Mrs. Temple. That's just about it. Yes. Come along, McCall. Hello, Inspector. Why, hello, Temple. It hasn't taken you long to get here. The matron of St. George's is a friend of mine. I was at the hospital when the call came through. Oh, I see. It's a nasty business. Yes, is she badly hurt? Very badly, I'm afraid. Long time since I've seen anything like it. Is she conscious? Just about. Do you think I could see her? Well... Actually, I had an appointment with her. You did? Yes, that's why I'm here. Where did you arrange to meet her? At the Commodore Club? Yes, she phoned two or three times, but I was out. Excuse me, Inspector. Oh, yes, nurse? Yes. Uh, we're leaving now. Oh, um, this is Mr. Temple. He wants to have a word with Mrs. Desmond. Do you think he could travel back with you? Yes, I think that'll be all right. Thank you, nurse. I'll see you at the hospital, Inspector. This right. way, Mr. Temple. I got tired of waiting, so I, I went outside. Then I saw you drive up, but, but I didn't want to go into the club again, so... I went to your car. I meant to wait for you in the car, but he saw me. He saw me. Who saw you, Mrs. Desmond? Van Dyke? Yes. He dragged me out of the car. He hit me. Don't let him hit me. Please don't let him hit me again. It's all right, Mrs. Desmond. No one's going to hurt you. We're taking you to the hospital. There's no need to worry. You'll be perfectly all right. To the hospital? You're taking me to... Who's that? Who's that? It's me, Mrs. Desmond. Paul Temple. Don't you remember? You wanted to see me. Temple? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I sent for you, didn't I? I wanted to tell you about Miss Millicent. Yes? What about Miss Millicent? She didn't know what was in the packages. We ne never told her that she was helping to distribute drugs. Go on, Mrs. Desmond. One day she opened one of the packages. It was for Mrs. Drosty. When she discovered what it was, she wanted to go to the police. We told her that if she did, 
We'd say that she was one of us. Is that why she disappeared? Why she took the child? Yes. She thought that if she had the child, she could force us to change our minds. What happened then? We found her and the baby. Van Dyke found her. He sent for Queenie Edwards. He sent for her because he knew that... That That Miss Millicent had confided in her? Yes. When he discovered that Queenie worked in Madame Flaubert, he tried to... Oh, my head. Don't touch my head. Please don't touch my head. I'm afraid she'll have to be kept quiet. Yes, all right, nurse. Just one more question. Mrs. Desmond, tell me, who is Van Dyke? Van Dyke? Van Dyke is... Don't let him touch me. Please don't let him touch me, please. It's all right, Mrs. Desmond. It's all right. There's nothing for you to be frightened of. Just relax. Just relax. Morning, sir. Did you ring? Yes, Charlie. Bring some more marmalade, please. Okay. Anything else? Yes, some toast and some butter, Charlie. Blimey, you're not got an appetite this morning. Oh, uh, what about coffee? No, we're all right for coffee. But I expect Mrs. Temple wants some tea, though. She's in the kitchen now, making it. Women are funny about tea, aren't they? They're funny about a great many things, Charlie, but don't let's go into that. Not at this time of the morning. Okay. Charlie, I've left the cooker on. Yes, all right, Mrs. Temple. Don't let it so, Stire. Okey doke. Oh, Paul, don't eat with your mouth full. Well, how should I eat them? I mean, don't be. You know perfectly well what I mean, so don't do it. Is that this morning's paper? Yes. Can I see it? Yes. Oh, there's a photograph of Mrs. Desmond on the front page. Oh. oh. <clears throat> yes, it's pretty gruesome, isn't it? Oh. They must have taken it just as he was being got into the ambulance. It's horrible. It is indeed. Steve, what are you doing this morning? Why? Well, I've got an appointment with Sir Graham at ten o'clock. At the yard? Hmm. He phoned me about twenty minutes ago. They're going to ask Terry Palmer a few questions. Mm-hmm. After what happened last night, it's not surprising. Do you think that Palmer was responsible for what happened? In other words, is Terry Palmer Mr. Van Dyke? Yes. That's the leading question. You can bet your bottom dollar on one thing, though. Whoever was responsible was under the impression that Mrs. Desmond was dead. Otherwise, they wouldn't have left her. No. Paul, I think that Van Dyke, whoever he is, is mad. You think he's a criminal lunatic? Yes, I do. Don't you? After what happened to Mrs. Desmond and Queenie Edwards, how can one think otherwise? Van Dyke's cruel, sadistic, utterly and completely ruthless, but he's not mad, darling. He's as sane as you and I. Mm. Listen, Steve, there's something I want to ask you. Yes? Look, I want you to go away for two or three days into the country. Why? Well... Things are coming to a head, aren't they? Yes, Steve, they are. Well, I'm not going away. Darling, I wouldn't ask you to do this. I, I've never asked you before. We've always been together, but... Well, why I'm are the... you asking me now? Don't you know why? You saw what happened to Queen Edwards, to Mrs. Desmond. I'm staying. I'm not going away. Oh, Steve, now don't let me stupid about this. Oh, dear, I am not going away. All right. But promise me you'll be on your guard. I do promise, really. If you receive a message, check it. Doesn't matter who it's from, whether it's from me or Sir Graham or anyone else, check it and double check it. All right, Paul. What happened last night? I was asleep when you got back. Was Mrs. Desmond able to tell you anything? She was in a pretty bad state. By the time we reached the hospital, she'd passed out completely. One thing she did do, though, she cleared up the mystery of Miss Millicent. I always knew she wasn't kidnapped. Excuse me, sir, but Mr. Shelley would like to see you. I told him you were having breakfast. Where have you put him, Charlie? I haven't put him anywhere. Not yet, sir. I know where I'd like to put him. (laughs) All right, Charlie. You'd better ask him in here. Okay, sir. What does Shelley want, I wonder? Your guess is as good as mine. Well, he's probably read about Mrs. Desmond. Yes, unless he's remembered something. How do you mean? Don't forget, Mrs. Desmond wasn't the only person to be attacked last night. Someone went for Shelley. Oh, I wonder. Don't tell me you doubt, Mr. Shelley, darling. <laughs> oh, 
Good morning, Mr. Shelley. Come along in. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Temple. Good morning, Mr. Temple. Oh, dear. Have I interrupted your breakfast again? Oh, how very upsetting. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right, Shelley. Glad to see you. Have some coffee? Uh, well, um... Or some tea. Well, may I? Coffee, please. Mm. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, I'm all right, really. Just a little stiff after that terrifying experience. Well, you were very lucky, Shelley. Look what happened to poor Mrs. Desmond. Why, what do you mean? Haven't you seen the papers? No. Here you are, Mr. Shelley. Read this. Uh, poor Mr. Shelley had a cup of coffee. Yes, I will. Oh, but this is dreadful. Mrs. Desmond. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Well, there it is, Shelley. It says here that you were with her. That you went to the hospital with her. Yes. Was she conscious? Part of the time. Oh, this is dreadful, really dreadful. Mr. Temple, do you think the man who attacked me was the same person that nearly murdered Mrs. Desmond? Yes, I do. But why? Why should he attack Mrs. Desmond? Well, I can understand that, but why should he go for you, Shelley? That's more to the point. But what do you mean? Well, after all, Mrs. Desmond was mixed up in the militant affair. It was her baby that disappeared. Yes, but I don't see why he's... Do you know why I went to the Commodore Club last night? No. Mrs. Desmond sent me an urgent message asking me to meet her there. Why? Because she wanted me to tell wanted to tell me about Miss Millicent and about Van Dyke. And did she? Unfortunately, she was too ill to say much. I'm afraid she still is. There's your copy, Mr. Shelley. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Temple. I'll pass it, yes, darling. Sir. Now, where did I put my lighter, Steve? I think you put it... Oh, Paul, look out. You'll spill that coffee. Oh! Oh! Oh, 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 oh stupid of me. me. I'm oh, awfully oh, sorry, oh, Shelley. Oh, Shelley. Oh, that's all right. It's nothing. Really, it's nothing. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. oh, thank you. Look here. You better take your jacket no, off. No, no, really. Oh, yes, please. No, it's nothing. Nothing. Don't bother, please. Oh, what on earth? Oh, darling, I have the coffee in one hand. I was looking for... Oh, look, Shelley. Do take your jacket off. I'll have it dry in no time. Oh, all right. Did you call Mr. Temple? I did. Charlie. We've had an accident, Charlie. Will you clear this up, please? Okay. Come along, Mr. Shelley. We'll go into the drawing room. Oh, thanks. Well, I'll be with you in a moment. Won't take me long to do this. What about your coffee, sir? Will you take it with you? Or have you had enough? More than enough. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Here's your jacket, Shelley. I think you'll find it all right now. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered, Mr. Temple. I don't think it'll mark. No, I'm sure it won't. Ah, oh, thanks. Mr. Temple, I'll tell you what I dropped in about. Although I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't recognize the man again, the man that attacked me, I mean, there was something that I think perhaps you ought to know about. Well? When we were struggling, I got hold of his wrist. I think it must have been his left one, the one with the wristwatch on. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he was wearing a bracelet. A bracelet? Yes, you know the sort of thing I mean, with an identity disc attached to it. Oh. What's the matter, dear? Nothing. I, I was just thinking, that's all. Oh, do you know anyone that wears a bracelet like that, Mrs. Temple? Well. Well, do you, Steve? Yes, and so do you, Don. Mr. Drosty wears an identity bracelet. He was wearing it in Paris when we saw him at the restaurant. Mr. Drosty? But Drosty's in Paris, darling. He left last night. How did you know? Did you see him leave? No, but... but just a moment. Said... Is this Mr. Drosty the millionaire, the one who owns the Commodore Club and the words of the hotel at Marlowe? Yes. Do you know him? No, no, I've seen him about, of course. He's rather a thick-set, um, swarthy individual. Yes, that's right. You know, that might have been Drosty last night. I never thought but you of said that. the man was about yes, my yes, bill. Yes, I know I did, but... What time did the plane leave? Well, I believe he caught the last plane. Well, there you are, then. What do you mean, there you are, then? You mean that even if he did leave for Paris last night, he could still have attacked both you and Mrs. Desmond? Precisely, Mrs. Temple. Huh. Shelley, I think perhaps you'd better have a word with Inspector Eden about this. I have an appointment with Sir Graham at ten o'clock, so you'd better come with me. Oh, well, it's nearly a quarter to ten now. Yes, I know. Have you got a car here? No, no, I'm afraid I haven't. Oh, well, we can pick up a cab at the end of the road. Steve, I don't know what time I should be back, but um, don't forget what I told you. I shan't. Well, bye-bye, Mrs. Temple. I'm so sorry if I made a nuisance of myself. Well, really, you haven't. Well, I hope I shall see you again soon sometime. I hope so. And the next time you drop in, you'd better bring an oil skin. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> from the hospital, Temple. Mrs. Desmond's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Does Palmer know? 
Yes, I told Eden to break the news to him. So Miss Millicent kidnapped the child. Yes, but I don't think she anticipated the tremendous fuss which was going to be made over the disappearance of the baby in the sitter inn. Anyway, Miss Millicent got frightened and told Queenie she intended to return the child. Then Queenie had a brainwave. She told Miss Millicent, before returning the child, they'd get their own back by throwing suspicion onto Terry Palmer. But how could Queenie Edwards throw suspicion onto Palmer? Well, she was friendly with Bert Walters. You mean the cloakroom attendant at the Commodore? Yes, she discovered that Palmer was a member of the Commodore and persuaded Walters to take the attaché case containing the doll. She got a cloakroom ticket from Walters, which she intended to send to the police. In turn, Walters promised that when the case was claimed, he'd throw suspicion on Palmer. But look here, this, this is news to me about Bert Walters. We've had him in here at the yard. We've questioned him half a dozen times. Uh, when did you see him, Temple? Yesterday morning. It's surprising what a nice cigar and a cup of tea will do, Sir Graham. Yes. Well, go ahead, Temple. Well, Queenie was playing her cards very nicely, and then suddenly Van Dyke played an ace. How do you mean? He found Miss Millicent and the baby. That's why Queenie Edwards went down to Marlowe. Van Dyke sent for her. Yes, he made Queenie a proposition. He said she either had to work for him, or he'd inform the police that she'd been responsible for the disappearance of the baby. Well, Queenie was frightened. She told Van Dyke she'd consider the proposition. But later that night, she reached a decision, and you know what happened. She arranged to meet you at Paddington and sent you the cloakroom ticket, eh? Yes, but Van Dyke, or someone else, must have overheard our conversation because, well, I don't have to remind you what happened to Queenie. McCaw could have overheard that conversation. The phone call was made from the Wordsworth. Yes. Temple, I don't dispute what you've told us. As a matter of fact, it seems to make sense, but... But what? Uh, well, it means we can cross Terry Palmer off the list, doesn't it? Obviously, Palmer isn't Van Dyke. I, I don't agree, Inspector. Palmer may well be Van Dyke. Don't forget, it was Van Dyke that discovered Miss Millicent and the baby. It seems to me that Palmer was in a better position than anyone else for tracking down Miss Millicent. That's very true, Sir Graham. Yes, I suppose it is, sir. Have you picked up Palmer? Yes, he's in a pretty bad way, I'm afraid. This Desmond affair last night has certainly shaken him. We'll have Palmer in here, Temple. You can have a word with him. Uh, bring Mr. Palmer in here, Sergeant William. Very good, sir. And what do you make of Roger Shelley, Temple? You know, it seems to me he's not quite so naive as he makes himself out to be. Did, you did he tell you what happened to him last night? Yeah, he certainly did. Temple, do you believe that story of his? Yes, I do, Sir Graham. Uh, Mr. Palmer, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Palmer. Good morning. Uh, that's all right, Sergeant. Thank you. Uh, will you sit down over there, Mr. Palmer? If you don't mind, I prefer to stand. Very well. Uh, Palmer, we understand that uh, Mrs. Desmond was a friend of yours. Mary Desmond was a very dear friend of mine. You know that as well as I do. Now, what's all this about? Mrs. Desmond was murdered last night. It's our job to find out who exactly murdered her. What do you mean, who exactly murdered her? I mean that quite a lot of people have contributed towards the death of Mary Desmond. But at the present moment, we're concerned with the identity of the actual murderer. Well, I'm sorry. I can't help you. I think you can help us. Now, look here. Let's get this straight. All I know about last night is what I've read in the newspapers. I've already accounted for my movements as I've written or reefer or whatever his name is. And there's nothing more I can tell you. In other words, you refuse to help us? It isn't a question of refusing. If you really want to find out who murdered Mrs. Desmond, take your behind off that chair and stop asking a lot of fatuous questions. There's no need to be rude, Mr. Palmer. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Palmer? Yes? What happened after I left you last night? What do you mean, what happened? What did you do? I finished typing the article I was writing, had a drink, and then went to bed. I thought you'd finished the article when I arrived. I didn't like part of it, so I retyped it. Did you receive any telephone calls? No. Mrs. Desmond didn't call you. If I didn't receive any telephone calls, Mrs. Desmond couldn't have called me, could she? Palmer, I hope you don't mind. I have to ask you a personal question. I'm getting very used to personal questions. Go on. How long have you worn an identity bracelet? brought you some tea, Mrs. Temple. Oh, thank you, Charlie. Where shall I put the tray? Uh, on the small table, please. Mrs. Temple? Yes? Bill's got the afternoon off. 
Do you think I could pop out for an hour or so? I'll be back before dinner. Everything's ready. Yes, all right. Uh, don't be any later than six. Okay. Oh, that's all right, Charlie. You get off. I'll answer it. Okay, don't. Good afternoon. Could I see Mr. Temple, please? I'm sorry. He isn't in at the moment. Oh, have you any idea when you'll be back? Well, uh, is it Mrs. Temple? Yes. Oh, I'm Marion Faber, Mrs. Temple. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Faber. I'm sorry, my husband won't be back until about uh, five o'clock. Oh, dear, what a nuisance. And I've come all the way from Chelsea. I suppose I ought to have telephoned, really. It was stupid of me. Well, it's uh, almost half past four now. If you'd care to come in and wait, may I? That's very kind of you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Would you like some tea? Oh, really, I feel I'm putting you to a lot of trouble. Not at all, it's here. I'm just going to have some myself. Well, thank you, I'd love a cup. What a charming room. So rather nice, isn't it? Oh, I say, what a delightful picture. It's French, isn't it? Yes, it's by Francois Raoult. He's not very well known here, I'm afraid, but it's charming. Did you buy it over here? Yes, from a little shop in German Street. Do you take milk? Please. Help yourself to sugar, will you? Thank you. What is it you wanted to see my husband about? Well, I don't know whether he told you what happened the other night when he came to the bungalow. Yes, as a matter of fact, he did. Well, I'm afraid I was rather rude to him and rather stupid into the bargain. Stupid? About what? Well, just as Mr. Temple was leaving, he noticed a photograph of... Oh, will you excuse me? Oh. Hello? Uh, can I speak to Dr. Wilbur, please? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm afraid you've got the wrong number. Oh, isn't that Dr. Wilbur's house? No, it isn't. Uh, aren't you Gerard 5327? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. Oh, so, so sorry to have troubled you. That's all right. <coughs> wrong number. Uh, what were you saying, Miss Faber? I was saying, just as your husband was leaving, he noticed a photograph of Terry Palmer. Oh, yes, I understand he's a friend of yours. Yes, but we don't see a great deal of each other. Oh? Well, it occurred to me, after Mr. Temple had left, that I might have given the impression that I was trying to throw suspicion onto Terry. Suspicion? Yes. You see, your husband questioned me about a letter. A stupid letter I sent to Roger Shelley. Mm -hmm. It was written exactly as Miss Millicent would write it. And Mr. Temple was anxious to know how I was able to copy Miss Millicent's handwriting. Oh, yes, I remember. You told Paul that someone gave you a sample of Miss Millicent's writing. Uh, you uh, refused to tell him who it was. Yes. And now you're worried in case he's jumped to the conclusion that it was Terry Palmer. <laughs> well, I don't want him to think that I was trying to throw suspicion onto Terry. You know, Miss Saber, if you take my advice... Oh, dear, this wretched phone. Do excuse me. Hello. Hello, Steve. Oh, hello, Paul. Look, I doubt if I'll be home much before six o'clock. Um, Paul, Miss Saber's here. Miss waiting Saber? to see you. Yes. Oh, how long has she been there? Oh, about five minutes. What does he want, Steve? Do you know? <laughs> no. All right, I'll be home in 20 minutes. Uh, just a second, darling. I think you'd better have a word with her. All right. It's my husband. Would you like to speak to him? Oh, thank you. Mr. Temple? Hello, Miss Faber. I'm afraid I'm making an awful nuisance of myself. Well, that's all right. What can I do for you? Well, I did rather want to talk to you, but if it's at all difficult... No, that's I... all right. I'd like to see you. I'd like to see you very much, Miss Faber. I'll be with you in about 20 minutes. Yes, all right. See you later, then. Goodbye. Thank you, Mrs. Temple. Now, uh, where was I? <laughs> you were just about to give me a piece of advice. Oh, yes. Uh, I was going to say, if you take my advice, Miss Faber, you'll be quite candid with my husband and tell him all you know about this business. I intend to be quite candid with him. That's why I'm here, Mrs. Temple. Oh, is anything wrong? This tea tastes awfully bitter. Is yours all right? Yes. Think so? Oh, that's funny. This your mind's perfectly all right. Hmm? Oh well, perhaps it's my imagination. Mrs. Temple, do you mind if I ask you a very frank question? No. What does your husband think of me as an artist? No, I don't mean as an artist. I mean, well, does he think I'm mixed up in this Van Dyke affair? Are you? No, I told him. I'd never heard of Van Dyke until he mentioned the name. I think Paul believed it was Van Dyke who gave you the Miss Millicent letter and that it was Van Dyke who told you to write to Shelley. Believe me, 
Now, after what happened last night, if I knew the identity of Van Dyke, I should go straight to Scotland Yard. Uh, last night? Yes, the murder. Mary Desmond. Oh, so you think Mrs. Desmond was murdered by Van Dyke? Well, don't you? It seems perfectly obvious to me that the same person that... Murdered... That... Murdered... That... What is it? That... I... I don't know. I... I suddenly felt dizzy. I... Oh, would you like some brandy? Uh, no, I shall be all right. I shouldn't feel like this. I... 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 Oh, yeah. I shouldn't try and stand, Miss Faber. This is silly. I've got to stand. I've got to... Oh. I can't move. What's the matter with me? Don't you know, Miss Faber? What do you mean? You didn't come here to talk to Paul about what happened last night at the bungalow. You came because Van Dyke sent you. You came here because Van Dyke told you to kidnap me. What have you done? I haven't done anything. You've done it yourself. I knew that wrong number was a trick. You put something into my tea while I was answering the phone, didn't you? Yes, but you drank it. You said the tea was bitter. You well, said... I wanted you to think that the tea was bitter. I wanted you to think that everything was going according to plan. Uh, your plan, Miss Faber. What do you mean? Why do you think I asked you to speak to my husband? I don't know. Don't you? Well, you're not being very bright. Uh, while you were on the phone, I changed your cup for mine. No. I don't believe it. You couldn't. You couldn't have done. But I did, Miss Faber. I did. <laughs> You've been listening to King Peacock as Paul Temple and Marjorie Westbury as Steve in the seventh ep episode of Paul Temple and the Van Dyke Affair with Lester Muddit as Sir Graham Forbes, Tommy Duggan as Bill McCall, Donald Gray as Inspector Eden, Joan Hart as Mary Desmond, Michael Harding as Charlie, Richard Herndall as Roger Shelley, Peter Cook as Terry Palmer, Susan Burette as Marion Faber. Other parts were played by Janet Morrison and Lewis Ward. The production was by Martin C. Webster. <laughs>